Hi everyone, let me start off by saying that I am very excited about today's video because this is actually the first video on this channel where I'm able to implement my knowledge from my university degree and combine it with a diabetes video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Michelle. I am 30 years old now and I've been living with type 1 diabetes for 17 years. I also happen to have my PhD in medical physics and today's video is all about medical imaging with medical devices. Just a quick note before I start, I'm only discussing medical imaging. I'm not talking at all about airport security, full body scans, anything like that. If you wanna see stuff like that, I do have a video on it. It's from a few years ago, but I feel like it's still up to date. So I'm gonna post it up here for you guys. So as someone living with diabetes, we might use medical devices such as insulin pumps, continuous glucose monitors, like I have my Dexcom G6 here on my arm, or flash glucose monitors such as the Freestyle Libre, and we use those to help us manage our diabetes. If you have ever had any sort of medical imaging done in the past, like an MRI, CT scan, x-ray, anything like that, you might have been asked prior to the medical imaging if you wear any medical devices. So the question is, why do your doctors, healthcare professionals, and medical imaging technicians even care about medical devices in the first place? Well, depending on the type of imaging, the the type of radiation emitted from the imaging can actually interfere with the electronics in your medical device causing it to malfunction. And for something like an insulin pump, this can be pretty scary and also deadly. In today's video, I'm going to go over some of the most common forms of medical imaging and how they may affect medical devices like insulin pumps, continuous glucose monitors, and flash glucose monitors. I also have guidelines from my local hospital about the precautions they take when doing any sort of medical imaging on someone wearing a medical device. But before I start, I just wanna give a disclaimer on this video. This video is just made to inform you of possible precautions that your healthcare provider may do before you do any sort of medical imaging. I am not a medical doctor or any sort of healthcare professional. I'm sharing the guidelines from my local hospital, but your local hospital might have different guidelines, so always ask at your hospital or the location where you're getting the medical imaging done, what their guidelines are for medical devices. And this video is really just made to make you guys aware that you do need to take precautions with certain forms of medical imaging. So I really just wanted to make this video to prompt you guys to ask questions before you undergo any sort of medical imaging because we need to be careful with our devices. After all, they are our lifeline. So we're gonna start off with MRI, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It uses very, very strong magnetic fields and radio waves to take an image of your body. And it's specifically good at taking images of soft tissue such as organs. It's a really useful form of imaging for diagnostic purposes. So it is therefore used quite frequently. And MRI is really kind of in a class of its own of imaging because it uses magnetic fields instead of ionizing radiation. So that means it doesn't actually deliver a radiation dose to your body. So that's another positive of MR imaging. However, I think this is the, the worst form of imaging for medical devices. So this is the one where you really, really have to be careful because like I said, it has very strong magnetic fields. Therefore, it is very likely to interfere with electronics and medical devices. For an insulin pump, this is especially scary because the FDA has actually received reports of an insulin pump malfunctioning after being exposed to strong magnetic fields in an MRI and just all of a sudden delivering a bunch of insulin and there have actually been some fatalities with respect to this sort of accident. So this is something definitely to watch out for if you are getting an MRI. So overall, MRI is a big fat no to all medical devices. Insulin pump, CGM, FGM, you wanna make sure all of these things are removed before going in an MRI. Of course, I'm not saying don't get MRIs because they're super important, but just make sure your medical devices are removed. And as for cannulas, it should be fine as long as your infusion set is all plastic, but if you're using Using one of the metal cannulas, this also has to be taken off. So what happens if you need to get an MRI and you're wearing medical devices? So I actually am getting an MRI in less than a week on Saturday. It is Sunday right now, next Saturday I'm going in for an MRI. I have a continuous glucose monitor on my arm and I'm also wearing my T-Slim insulin pump. So what is gonna happen? Well, I can tell you exactly what will happen because I am from the future. Hi, from future Michelle, I'm filming this 
in late 2020. Funny thing about this video is I actually filmed it early 2020 pre-COVID. I had that MRI scheduled for March. It was canceled and moved to September 2020. I have had the MRI and it is actually in my Labor Day vlog. So if you want to check it out, I'll put it up here for you, but it was super easy to do an MRI with medical devices. At imaging centers and hospitals, they are so aware of people with medical devices. As soon as I went in, they asked me if I'm wearing any jewelry or medical devices. I said, yes, I have an insulin pump on, and I pretty much just removed the pump right before I went in the machine. They had a special storage locker for me, which they locked up, so it was in like a safe room, locked away. For my Dexcom, the sensor actually expired the day before, so it was really good timing. I just took my sensor off and I didn't replace it as I normally would. And then when I got home from the MRI, I just put a new Dexcom sensor in. So it was pretty straightforward and if you want to see exactly how it worked and hear about it in more detail, then definitely check out my vlog after this video because I explain it more there. Now back to Michelle in March 2020, you have no idea what's coming this year, girlfriend. No idea. Next one is x-ray imaging. So an x-ray is a high energy electromagnetic wave that is able to penetrate through your body and capture what is happening on the inside. It's particularly useful for imaging the lungs and bone. So if you have a broken bone or if they're checking for pneumonia, most likely you'll get just a regular x-ray. According to the FDA, there is a low chance that x-rays will interact with your medical device. However, there have been some reported cases. My local hospital states that you can have your medical devices on if you're getting an x-ray. However, they need to be shielded by lead. So you'll have to have like some sort of lead shield over the device. Some hospitals might not agree with this though and will just say fully take off your device. I have to say I've had an x-ray where the technician has no idea about the medical devices. So I had an x-ray once to see if I had pneumonia. When I was in DKA in the hospital, they were checking to see if the pneumonia was the source and I told the x-ray technician, look, I'm wearing an insulin pump, should I take this off? Because it was on my waist and I was getting my lungs imaged and the girl like just had no idea. So I was not in the best state being in DKA and I just left my insulin pump on. So it definitely was exposed to x-rays. This is like going back a few years, so it's not my current pump that I have now. But it was exposed to x-rays and nothing happened, so luckily nothing happened to me, but if I would have been thinking more clearly, I probably would have removed my pump. All right, now we're gonna move on to CT scans, because this is another pretty common form of imaging. So CT stands for computed tomography, and it is essentially a series of x-ray images that is compiled to show you more of a 3D image of your body, much like an MRI would show. So the type of radiation is the same as just regular x-ray imaging because it uses x-rays, However, since you're taking so many series of x-ray images for CT scans, it does deliver a higher dose. So there is a higher probability of it interacting with the electronics in your medical devices. So for my local hospital, they say totally remove any medical devices for a CT scan, like take off your insulin pump, take out your CGM or FGM, act as if it were an MRI, same rules apply. And then the last form of medical imaging I wanna talk about is ultrasound because this is also very, very common. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this have had an ultrasound. So an ultrasound just uses high frequency sound waves. It technically should not interfere with any medical devices at all. However, my local hospital recommends that the transducer, which is the ultrasound probe, isn't directly pointed at the medical device. Otherwise, it's fine to keep it on. So that concludes this video. I just wanna conclude by saying that for any medical test, it is better to be safe than sorry with your medical devices. After all, like I said before, this is our lifeline. Always talk to your doctor, talk to your medical device company. Most importantly, never ever forego any sort of medical imaging because of your medical device. There are ways to work around it and there are ways to accommodate some of us cyborgs that have all sorts of parts on us. I hope this video will provide you guys with a base guideline for medical imaging with medical devices and I hope you find this helpful. I will see you guys next time. Bye.